Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Victoria Song. Today we are getting charged up, right? So pumped for a Monday morning, super charged. In fact, you could say we're three times as charged we're, as we normally are. We're triple charged. We have, we have the Fitbit Charge 3. three. Yes, this yes. is a fitness wearable, the latest from Fitbit. What is this thing, what does it do? So the Fitbit Charge series is their most popular, um, best-selling fitness tracker line. Mm -hmm. And this is just a very handy update to that line. So uh, the Charge 2 is our editor's choice and the Charge 3. The updated version is also our editor's choice. You're going to get a much larger screen with mm -hmm. a better uh, resolution. And it actually takes some of Fitbit's um, smart watch lessons and adds them to the tracker experience. So why is this Fitbit's most popular line? Is it the pricing? The pricing is great. This is mm -hmm. going to be $149.95 mm -hmm. uh, for the regular version. And if you want NFC capability, you can pay $20 more for the special edition and then you get Fitbit Pay along with that. I was going to say, why do you want NF NFC on your Fitbit? Well, you know, one thing that we're seeing increasingly with smartwatches, especially the fitness-oriented smartwatches and fitness trackers, is the ability to go kind of phone-free or wallet-free. Mm -hmm. So um, it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't make it quite as much of a sell for the Fitbit Charge 3, but if you want to go out and you don't feel like carrying a bulky wallet, you just want to carry your phone, then you can just go like, hey, beam, beam, and pay with it. How widely is Fitbit Pay accepted? Not so widely? Not so, it's like not as widely accepted as let's say Apple Pay okay. or like Android Pay. Or I feel like I haven't seen a lot of Fitbit Pay logos in you know, I, casual I cabs and I haven't either. Um, so that's a thing. Uh -huh. But like you do have that option to do, uh, to use Fitbit Pay. I've gone to a bunch of Fitbit events, so like it works when it is accepted. Okay. But um, the Charge 3 is extremely accurate. Uh, it mm -hmm. did really well in testing. We got stuff around in the 2% range of like two percentage different uh, percentage points of differentiation, mm -hmm. which is anything under 3% uh, uh, variation we find to be above average. So it is an above average tracker. Uh, is it waterproof, swimmable? Yes. So that was one of the things that when they upgraded from the two that the, you know, a lot of people who were fans of the charge wanted was it to go from water resistant to swim proof. And mm -hmm. this is swim proof. Great. So you can take it in the pool. It's fine. Um, it has smaller, uh, which we call it a heart rate monitor and mm. SBO2 sensor. So um, all of Fitbit's new trackers and smartwatches, they're adding the red SBO2 sensors, which measure, uh, I don't know how many times I've said this on here, but it measures blood oxidation levels so that you can, in the future, uh, check, out, check out sleep apnea. And mm -hmm. with the launch of the Charge 3, they are also launching a, uh, a Fitbit Lab sleep beta program. I was so. going to say, how does it work as a sleep tracker? It works excellently as a sleep tracker because, um, well, you know, what's the biggest thing about whether a tracker can actually track sleep? Battery life. Battery life on this is excellent. Great. This has an estimated battery life of seven days. Mm -hmm. So you're starting out with an estimated battery life of seven days. Of course, it's going to vary with usage and testing. On the seventh day, I still had 35% battery left. Wow. So you have excellent battery life with the Charge 3, and that's really great for people who are trying to stick on a program because, you know, I've talked to a lot of experts. The main thing about a tracker is something that you're going to use and what happens when you have to charge it. Mm -hmm. You take it off, it ends up in the drawer, you forget yep. to put it back on. So the fact that you can get seven days estimated, probably minimum seven days, uh, it's it, that's really just a huge... Up. Now, what do we have on here for smartwatch features, notifications? So you're going to get all of your smart notifications, so call, mm -hmm. text, calendar. If you have Android, um, the quick replies are going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, Apple, you can't get quick replies to text messages because, you know, Apple's Apple. They're not yep. going to really let that happen. But They want you to get an Apple Watch. They want you to get an Apple Watch. So what you can do is that in the previous one, you weren't really going to get Apple on this, but mm -hmm. you can get apps on this one. So like you swipe this way. By which you mean app notifications, app not like notifications, running apps. Not necessarily running apps, but Fitbit does have its own app uh, ecosystem and platform. It's an open SDK uh, mm -hmm. based on Pebbles. And you do get some things on here, like you can get the weather. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as that expands, they'll have other things. So you can get the weather on here. They're, they're adding options that you can just add directly onto the wrist. 
Um, they, they changed this. There's no button anymore. There's a little induction thing. So you press it. Oh, it looks like it goes, a button. It looks like a button, and you press it. It'll give you haptic feedback okay. so that you can tell that you're going back. Pressing it for a long time will get you a quick menu mm -hmm. to like the screen wake and the notifications. Let me hold that up. Hang on a sec. So on the side here, this really fooled me because I thought it was I thought it was a button, but if you look. It's concave, not mm -hmm. convex. It's like an anti-button. Yep. So they, they call this their induction button, and mm -hmm. it's to give it a more streamlined look. It's also to help with the like aerodynamics. So when you swim, I, I don't mm -hmm. know something along those lines. Uh, design mumbo jumbo, but it actually works quite well. Like the haptic feedback is strong enough. I never wondered if it was working. And you know, um, the swipe interface is better. The screen is better. Um, now you have been having to tap at it a couple of times to get it to wake mm -hmm. up. Is that a is is this a live demo on Facebook issue, or is this a broader issue with the device? This is a broader issue with all OLED uh, um, with all OLED monochrome screens that oh, I have okay. found on every single tracker. I had this problem with the Garmin Vivo Smart Series, especially with the three and a little bit with the four. Um, I will say that Fitbits gets easier to use once mm -hmm. you know where on the screen that you should be tapping and swiping. It gets a little easier, but I find that with this type of tracker, you're always going to have to tap a little harder, swipe a little smarter. Oh, there we go. Tap a little harder, swipe a little smarter. That's a country song for, yeah. <laughs> for Fitbit trackers, I guess. Yeah, and you know, like with any Fitbit, uh, it has modular straps, so it's really easy to just change it up. I started getting silicone rashes from all the wearables I was testing, so I was really happy that I could just have this woven nice thing. Nice fabric strap. A nice fabric strap, and my silicone rash has disappeared. So yay. Yeah, I don't see any rash there. That's, yeah, that's no, it was, it was it was it was it was a thing. It was a thing that I was experiencing. <laughs> Let's take some questions. Uh, someone's concerned about the the size of the of the watch. It's too wide or too flat. Or do they come in different sizes to to fit different wrists? No. <laughs> so uh, there this is there's really different. Quite small. This is yeah. This is quite small and it's quite thin. I don't have the largest wrist. Mine is on the more petite size, and I, I feel like it, it's quite unobtrusive. I find it's here, quite nice. Here, let me nice. take my, my Misfit Path off here, because my Misfit Path is a, a, a small, this is a small watch. Yeah, that is okay. a quite, that's quite a small and watch. And you can see the Fitbit tracker, it's significantly thinner mm -hmm. than the dial of my Misfit. So maybe you're having like a camera video thing where the proportion, you can't quite tell the proportions, but it's pretty small, it really it's is. It's quite small, and one of the changes that uh, happened from the Charge 2 to the Charge 3 is that if you look at the sensors, mm -hmm. these don't protrude quite as much. It'll, uh, it'll rest much more flush against your wrist than mm -hmm. the Charge 2 did when I was doing a comparison. And the other thing is that Fitbit has a large assortment of uh, Fitbit trackers. The Alta HR is much slimmer. Uh, mm -hmm. That's more popular with women with more petite wrists. It has a lot of the same features that the Charge does. Um, so if you want something that's like really, really slim, you could go for the Alta series. Uh, the other thing I will say is that I find the larger screen, uh, the screen upgrade from the Charge 2 to be really great for reading notifications. Like I can finally read an entire text on my wrist from my tracker, which I found to be really mm -hmm. great. Before it used to be like, and wait as it scrolls. Mm -hmm. And now I found what my message no, so is. Are you waiting for the, for the text to appear or are you swiping up through the text? Okay, so when the notification comes, mm -hmm. uh, you'll you'll see that it comes, and then you can also swipe down. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that see, this is one of the issues that I did have, uh, where I swiped down pretty clearly, and it thought I swiped left, but supposed supposedly you swipe you swipe down. This is one of the cons that we had. It's because you're holding it at a weird angle. We'll yeah, put, like right in front of you. Yeah. Well, I don't have any notifications, but then you're not going to show any notifications. Yeah, yeah. But there when you, you swipe down, uh, you'll get the notification mm -hmm. menu, and it'll tell you. Now, this is a Fitbit uh, on on Facebook Live demo. That's why it's not working. Type thing totally worked fine in, in, in testing. You just swipe down, it'll bring your notifications up, and you can tap them and take a look at them. So, okay. it's not going to look like a smartwatch. So, if you want a smartwatch experience, you're not really going to get that here because. Again, it's a monochrome mm -hmm. screen. You're not going to get like a color screen. You can't speak into it. You can't do all of that stuff. But as far as trackers go, overall, this is extremely versatile and affordable and accurate. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's our editor's choice. Any more questions out there?
Okay, so this is the Fitbit Charge 3. It is a 4.5 star, $150 fitness tracker. It's our editor's choice. Uh, it is pretty much the benchmark against which we measure other fitness trackers at this point, right? Yeah, uh, you know, Fitbit is the most recognizable fit, uh, fitness tracker brand. They are, in terms of accuracy, they may not always be the most accurate, but they are very accurate mm -hmm. all the time. The heart rate monitoring on this was excellent. I, it was bang on, straight on point. And you know, their price points are always really good. So they are, they are the one to beat in terms of name recognition and just overall build quality, so. Terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. We will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, on Facebook with another cool thing. And of course, on YouTube, like and subscribe. We have another cool thing every day.